Shit my pretty eye and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here and today we're taking a look at the brand new Europe pack animals and I'm super excited because there's so much new stuff to see not just the animals but there are loads of new build items too but we won't be going through that today and we are in a pre terraformed map at the moment. I thought I'd have something pretty to see in the background. And this map is called the English Countryside Landscape by Planet Leafy. And I just thought it was beautiful. I just picked this area because I hadn't already built in it. But yeah, I'll put the link to this map in the description of the video as well because I thought this one would be great for a European pack. Some of these animals are actually from the UK, which is really exciting because obviously I am from the UK. If you haven't already guessed from the accent, I am very Welsh. I've set up their habitats already and maybe you can guess what's going to be in them from these stained glass pieces. Which, how beautiful are these? I had to put them in. Just grabbed a few things of my favourite. But yeah, let's get the first animal in. Oh, how exciting. Let's see them come in for the first time. <sighs> oh, now this is an animal I am very familiar with. These definitely live in the UK. Oh, they're so cute. Hi. Oh my goodness. How cute are these? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I don't know whether you watch any of my other animal overviews, but I tend to say cute a lot with these and I just know I'm going to repeat myself over and over and over again. I should have known with the long grass as well with these badges. Hello. <gasps> oh, they're so good. Like, oh, the claws. Look at him doing a little scratch. Oh. <sighs> oh, she. I can't remember. Oh, they're so cute. And in the background, you can see this is the new burrow object as well. And I've put two in. So they are the European badger. And yep, they're from the UK. There I am in this little part here. That's Wales. <laughs> this is not all England. Uh, just so you know and it's really cool because Frontier uh, from the UK as well so it's really cool that we're getting like UK sorts of animals whoa okay European badger hair is often used for shaving brushes and for making sporins sporins and in some European countries badgers are attributed to the heralds of spring in folklore they commonly occur in fables where they are described as reclusive and courageous, likely due to their shy and nocturnal behavior. Oh, that's so cute. <gasps> Who should we do next? Should we just go in a line? I don't know. I'm really excited to see the Ibex and what they're gonna do with this. So let's see, that's gonna be the female. <gasps> wow, look at their eyes. Oh, wow. Oh, you're very cute too. Oh dear. <laughs> so this is the female Ibex. Yes. And yeah, wow. Oh, their eyes are so different. Another female. I want to see what they do with like the rocks. Because I know with Ibexes, they can climb on pretty much like any ledge where even if you would think it is not something that they could climb on they can seen them on like dams on the walls of dams and they just stood on what looks like nothing <gasps> there's the male they have got like the s slit straight pupil instead of a rounded pupil that's really different i like how they've done this too makes them look really thick and fluffy like the fur look really thick I 
think the closest animal to these that we've had before are the doll sheep or the doll sheep. But they don't really look anything like the doll sheep either, do they? Very interesting. I like these. They're not as adorable as the badgers are, of course, but they're really nice animals. Like I said, alpine ibex are extremely good climbers and often seen in precarious positions on near vertical mountainsides. This is what I wanted to see how Planet Zoo would work around that. Ibex hooves have curved undersides and thin edges that act like suction cups enabling them to grip to steep surfaces. I've seen them on images before and they really look like they are pretty much floating on these things so that's how they can using these curved undersides it's interesting so we've looked at two now why don't we look at the exhibit animal next and these are the new exhibits let's see if we can find them that's the question with exhibit animals oh are they tiny okay I thought they'd be bigger than this. I don't know why. I should know a, a salamander or a newt, right? Uh, it's the thing that Matilda finds <laughs> and puts it in Miss Trunchable's water glass. Such a detailed little thing for exhibit animals. I'm always shocked when I get right up close to the exhibit animals So how many little details are actually added in. You won't really expect to be able to zoom in this close and like see all of these little details. So they've got like little creases. You can't see my mouse in this one but they've got little creases over their head, the bumps along the back like the spine and down the tail. I love the colorfulness of them as well. Oh, the bright coloration of the fire salamander inc indicates toxicity. They secrete a neurotoxin called salamanderin through the skin, which can cause muscle convulsions, difficulty breathing, high blood pressure, and expiration. <laughs> Unless ingested, however, this toxin is generally not dangerous to humans. Oh, so they're bright because they're warding other animals off which is usually the case in the animal kingdom according to legend the fire salamander received this name because it was born in fires most likely they were hiding on wood the humans gathered to build fires and then they tried to escape the flames by crawling out of the embers oh that's pretty sad let's have a look at the male fallow deer oh wow so when I seen the sneak peeks to these, I thought these were Bambi. <laughs> because Bambi has like these spots on him. So when I first saw the sneak peeks to these, I was like, oh, we're getting Bambi, yes. No, Bambi is not technically a fallow deer. In the Disney cartoon, it is a white-tailed deer for the American audience to recognize the deer more but I really love the spots on these every time we have a showcase I have some point where my animals end up being two-headed <laughs> oh dear oh it's a deer oh dear oh dear <laughs> just ignore me and my terrible sense of humor but I really like the spots. A very cute little... Oh. <laughs> Aren't they adorable? Yes. <laughs> oh, this is an enrichment tree, by the way. Oh. I love them. My, my new favorite. <gasps> Look at him in the background holding that one. I have to see that. Okay, I haven't even got to the uh, fun facts yet. I need to actually get in on that, but I need to take some screenshots. Is Dia holding that? It's so cute. That's how the llamas hold it, actually. Uh. 
Oh, how tiny the poops are! Oh. Wow. Majestic. European fallow deer have excellent eyesight and hearing and can, detect, and can detect very slight movements in their surroundings which helps them avoid predation. And while the antlers of European fallow deer are growing, they are covered in velvet. When growth is complete, the velvet is shed and the antlers may temporarily have a tattered appearance. Huh. I wonder what that actually looks like. <gasps> I just seen a badger go in the thing. Oh, let's go in. Ah, hello. <gasps> okay, so cheeky look at the badger in the barrow. <laughs> Why not? I just seen one go in. I want to see how this works. Oh, so this is just kind of how I've been like faking a burrow. Yes, we do have a lynx in. And this is the female. <gasps> okay. Yep, yeah, I get why you are the main animal for the pack. Okay, you're beautiful. But I still think I like the fallow deer the most. Now we've gone through all of them. Which animal is your favourite? <gasps> what the heck? What are you doing up there? <laughs> I've never seen the scratching posts used like that. Oh, the Eurasian lynx is Romania's national animal. Oh, that's really cute. And during the winter, the Eurasian lynx grows thick fur on its feet so it can move unimpeded through the snow. Oh, kind of like the Arctic fox then. The Arctic fox has fluffy feet to be able to go through the snow. How cute! I really love these. I really, really like these animals. Oh no! And all of the building items as well. I know I'm going to use so much of this. I really like the style of these buildings. Like the style inspiration for these buildings. And this is the... Keeper hat? I wonder what this word means. And in what language it's coming from. That's interesting. So these are the staff buildings. These are all the smaller staff buildings. And I've also grabbed some of the new restaurants as well because restaurants come in the 1.8 update. Yeah, let's just call it that. <laughs> and obviously we can make our own too. But these are the new restaurants. Oh! Oh, look at that <gasps> that's interesting so we just have restaurant can we pizza burger sweet potato fries Ooh, ice cream mountain dessert I haven't long done an ice cream shop and I used the Bernie's Bakes cupcake for it and a tea cake platter dessert I'm always gonna go for the desserts but there's like a little restaurant kitchen in here, if I get out of this, we can see. Oh, you've got like first aid box. <laughs> A fire extinguisher. <gasps> Look at these little details. Kitchen rolls. <laughs> oh, too far. The little cooker. I want all of these as separate objects. <laughs> I want kitchen rolls. I want these as little clutter objects, please. Please. <laughs> Please give me mini clutter objects. I love props and clutter objects so much. And another thing that I was almost disappointed that we have, because <laughs> I've only, um, I haven't long made food trucks for Planet Zoo, but how cute is this? And I'm guessing they are flexi color. <gasps> yes, can I have a pink van? Oh, that is me done. Wow. Blue. Ooh, purple. Hmm. And what colours? <gasps> and, oh, we can go for interior too. Oh, how, what colour the cookers are. Or the, the cabinets inside. 
I love flexi color items compared to what I built because I have the the blueprint up and I just grabbed one of them it is a lot smaller than what I built so there we go <laughs> Very cute too. That's kind of how I would do it. I don't know whether that would work. And that's just another restaurant that I grabbed. And this one's got, ooh, this one's got like a an upstairs to it. And I really like the new tables with the little chairs on them. I really like these new objects. So they were just a couple of the blueprints that I really liked. So now we've gone through all of the new animals from the Europe pack and we've had a look at some of the blueprints and some of the new buildings from the Europe pack. What is your favourite animal? I think I'm going to have to go for the fallow deer. Although the badger did surprise me quite a lot. I really like that one. And are you looking forward to putting restaurants in your zoos? Um... I'm definitely gonna have to play around with that and make my own restaurant I think because I really like that new idea and yeah there's a lot of different things there's a lot of new items and a lot of new like enrichment items for the animals as well like the burrows and that climbing rock thing for the ibex but yeah, we'll just see all of the babies now as well that I'll put on in the background of this while I do my outro. And yeah, so let me know what your favourite animal is and what you're most looking forward to putting in one of your zoos or seeing me put in one of mine. And I'm going to leave it off there because I've already been talking for an hour and that is just far too long. Stop rambling, Caitlin. I've really enjoyed this though. I really, really like this pack. And not just because I feel like I can build my own kind of home zoo now. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And if you haven't already and you would like to, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.